heard about chat theory. Cultural historical activity theory or chat is an evolved framework from Vygotsky original cultural historical theory that you probably know. It was further developed by Leontief and Engestro. Why do we need to know about this theory? It gives us lens to analyze and understand learning of children and also understand family. It focuses on the interaction between children and their social cultural context, basically the context of their family and community. Let's talk about chat origins. Where did this theory come from? Vygotsky introduced the idea of mediation, where human actions are mediated by cultural tools and signs. And Engstrom in 2007 described it. Focuses on the role of cultural artifacts in shaping mental processes, such as thinking, memory, problem solving. Another Soviet psychologist, Leontief, expanded chat framework to include collective activity, integrating community and division of labor. Of course, he was Soviet. He provided more systematic approach to understanding activities. Engstrom further developed the chat theory to address networks of interacting activity systems. If it does sound complex to you, it is not an easy to understand theory. But remember, even Vygotsky is not simple. He talked about resolving contradictions through expensive learning. Now let's talk about the key concepts of chat theory. The key concept is an activity system which includes components such as the subject, in our case a child or a group. Object is a goal. Mediating artifacts, remember those cultural tools such as language, symbols, play, and rules. Vygotsky already talked about rules of play, and if you are interested in learning about the rules and play, I can make a video on that too. In this theory, because it is a social cultural theory, community is also very important because children learn in context of their communities. Because we are talking about Soviet psychologists, they talk about division of labor as well. This uh, system that Engstrom described in 1987 helps us to understand the dynamic and complex nature of human activities, and also complex nature of learning, of course. This is actually quite relevant to the EYLF that describes learning as dynamic and complex process. Remember I mentioned expensive learning? Expensive learning is the process that involves identifying contradictions within the activity system and resolving them through collective learning and innovation. In other words, if you are an educator, you will make sure that children have access to groups. For example, their peer groups, also that they learn in small groups. For example, you might have a shared meeting or group time where you discuss and solve problems. You also can involve other adults and create those communities of learning, which is also part of social cultural approach. It is a cyclical process with stages that involve questioning, modeling, implementing, and finally consolidating new practices. You can think of the example such cycle. Let's say you want to improve sustainability practices in your center. So you start, you start with a question, right? So how can I improve the practices? And you ask the community and children. Then you start modeling those practices by picking up rubbish, uh, recycling, and doing all sorts of similar things.